I'm glad to be back here. A lot of people ask me uh, how often I come to India. I come to India every three months or so. <laughs> we have an office here in Mumbai. And uh, I actually challenge some of my Indian friends to say that I've been to some place that they have not been to. So if you're, you're curious about that, come and ask me after, <laughs> after this presentation in India. Okay, uh, let's run to that. Uh, okay. I think just now there was uh, questions about mobile search. Uh, this is my first slide, actually. This slide come from uh, uh, <clears throat> come from e-marketers uh, about the split of mobile uh, advertising uh, in the different medium. In fact, according to this chart, most of the uh, a big number of them actually come from mobile message uh, advertising. A lot of what you hear today about mobile marketing for the last few years was mo almost mostly on SMS. Uh, messaging, or in other words, spam. <laughs> right, uh, a lot of people were using uh, SMS to, to send out uh, their so-called marketing message. Uh, but for the last few years, uh, you start seeing things like mobile display advertising, which what Naveen talked about just now, and also search advertising. Search is not click to search, though. I think just now there was some misunderstanding of the questions. It's actually about advertisement being put next to a mobile search results. Yeah, that's what Google uh, is doing. So, but we expect for the next few years, actually, the display and the search portion will, will outpace the growth of the message. Although, although the message portion will still, still, uh, still be quite big. Because actually, it's easy money. All right, uh, uh, you go to a carrier, I'm sorry to say that, uh, <clears throat> and then they will sell you this opt-in, or so-called opt-in database with certain profile that you can send them huge amount of messaging. So marketer likes to use that, but, but at some point, it actually hurt their branding a bit because uh, you don't like to receive spam. <coughs> okay. Uh, this is a chart that I use a lot to to to, uh, to demonstrate what is the uh, the uh, <coughs> potential of mobile internet advertising. Uh, you see this chart. Uh, let's say you take from from the left. Uh, the yellow chart are the time spent for the U.S. adult yeah, on the different uh, medium. This is published by uh, Mobile uh, Morgan Stanley. Has been just updated uh, just a couple months ago. It shows you that 12% of the media consumption time on US uh, adult is spent on print, 16% uh, on radio, 31% on TV, and 28% on internet. But the green bar is showing you the amount of mobile, uh, the amount of advertising and marketing dollars being spent on each of the medium, right? So you have 26%, uh, I believe, on print. And then 9% on radio, 39% on uh, TV, and 13% by internet. Well, if you believe the fact that, uh, that uh, uh, mobile dollar, I mean, sorry, advertising dollars always follow your eyeball, then the two bars should be equal, isn't it? <laughs> right, so that means that uh, you will see that uh, the print uh, is the one that will, will suffer the most exodus of marketing dollar away from, from that. And then uh, there is this gap of 50 billion get what they call internet, uh, 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 global opportunity or internet, or which mobile internet advertising is part of it. And in fact, this is showing you the US adult. Adult probably means 25 years old and above. Uh, I, have a, I have two children, one of them 17 and they're on 15. They don't watch TV at all. Huh. Any one of you have, have teenage people that they, they don't watch TV at all? When there's this uh, Asian game happening or some of these nice uh, figure skating uh, competition is going on. My 15 years old daughter will go to go to on her laptop and watch it on the YouTube, rather than following the broadcast schedule. So, so you will see that that's the 50 billion opportunities that uh, marketing dollar will move into the internet. <coughs> okay, uh, <coughs> this chart is a bit outdated. It's, uh, in fact, it's, it show you the the uh, <coughs> the uh, point that one of the speaker, I think Rajiv, was making just now. The dropping data rate is actually bringing very high mobile internet uh, adoption. These are the few markets of major markets that we serve. Uh, South Africa, Indonesia, India, Malaysia, and Thailand. Uh, on the one, two, three, four, fifth, uh, the, the, the second column from the right shows the mobile internet users. In fact, the Indian users that I put on just a couple of months ago is seriously, seriously under estimation. Right, it's 12 million. Anybody believe that there's only 12 million mobile internet users in India? I don't think so. I think most of the numbers that people will point out to me is something like 60 million, 70 million. Does that sound more believable to you? <laughs> right? Uh, and it's in, in, uh, it is important to realize that what's the number of internet, PC internet users in India? Probably like in the range of 30, 40 million. Right? So it's about at least half of the internet users you see, another 30, 40 million today, are accessing the internet exclusively on mobile. 
Now, as the internet, mobile internet penetrations of India continue to grow, someone tell me the latest figure show that there are 800 million mobile phone users in India. That's mind-boggling numbers, right? <laughs> right uh, I don't know whether it's going to grow to, let's say, in three years' time, 200 million uh, inter mobile internet users in India. How many of them are going to access internet on PC? I don't think there's been much difference from 40, 50 million. Right, so there'll be another 200 million or so of, uh, of uh, people who are using exclusively mobile to access internet. And that's the same, same pattern we saw for most of the uh, countries such as Indonesia, South Africa. Even in a relatively more advanced country like Malaysia, you'll see in the rural area, in the second tier cities, uh, people are using the mobile phone to access internet as well. Thailand especially, outside of Bangkok, uh, a lot of people using, uh, <coughs> using the, uh, don't have access to the internet. I, I have an interview just now with a, with a journalist. I kind of say that this anecdotally, right? <coughs> uh, you want to see a market whereby it may be picked up very quickly on the mobile marketing, mobile internet marketing. You go to a country like, Bank, uh, like Thailand and look at the TVC. <coughs> if you don't understand Thai, <laughs> you don't understand Thai, but you can understand almost what the advertisement is telling you about on the TVC. Probably that's the country that uh, the mobile marketing will pick up very fast. Why do I say that? It's usually because <clears throat> the, the marketers in that, in that, uh, in that uh, country has mastered the, the skill to send their message to these less sophisticated users in a very simple manner. So even though I don't understand Thai when I watch the, the, the TVC, I know that it is selling a mint and it's going to make me feel very cool, and the girl will like me. <laughs> I don't understand a single word of Thai. Right? <laughs> so, <clears throat> so that's a less sophisticated uh, user, and now that they are now available on mobile internet, that they will use it because of the data rate. You see the data rates are dropping very fast. And in fact, all this, the, the markets that have more than, 10, more than 10 mobile carriers are heaven for Bus City, <laughs> because they are, they are competing with each other on the mobile rate, and it draw down the mobile rate, more and more users are using that. <clears throat> So with the low, dropping data rate, high, uh, highly mobile is... <clears throat> so the second one is that the more affordable the smartphone is, uh, there will be more mobile internet adoption. That's quite, quite, uh, <coughs> quite uh, easy to understand. Uh, people are talking about Android phone right now. And, uh, and uh, actually, one of the major growth areas that we see is what we call the white box phone from our data. White box, uh, in general, we, we use it to, to denote any of the phones that wasn't this big four or five brand. Not Nokia, not Apple, not Android, but mostly Chinese manufacturer phones. They take on different brands. Uh, in Indonesia, it's called Nexian, and uh, in, in some other places, it's called some other, some other names. And the drive, the, the, point, the price is dropping down really, really seriously. You can get, you can get a blueberries in Indonesia, not a blackberry, blueberries and a red berry, so something like that for like $50 and $30. And once the price drops down and the, the function approximate the more advanced feed, uh, the more advanced smartphone, the users are using that to serve mobile internet a lot. <clears throat> okay, uh, I show this market segment. Uh, most of the other places, especially in India, we understand this already, uh, but the, the, the Western market sometimes still struggle to understand this a bit. If you look at it from the left, right, <clears throat> the, the market segment that we talk about, uh, you have knowledge workers. Knowledge workers, actually, yeah, all of us, actually. You know, none of us don't use PC or laptop, right? We all use PC and laptop. We are all, we all knowledge workers. So we are, we are that. But as you move to the right, you'll see this upper middle class in some of the, some of the more emerging markets. Then you have non-knowledge workers, the policemen, the security guard, the, the, <clears throat> the, the hawkers, the people that don't manipulate symbols as part of their job. You know, we all manipulate symbols. We move a symbol from one side to the other side and the left to the right and then we make our money. <laughs> there are people who move flour from here and move something here and they can produce food and they serve it to us. <coughs> these are, the, these are non-knowledge workers. So on, on this left side, uh, <clears throat> these knowledge workers, people like us, we are increasingly moving our, our internet time to mobile. Right? Four, four years ago, none of us used mobile to access internet, right? Today you can see iPad and uh, I will use my iPhone to do something. We're increasingly moving our time to mobile device. And that's where people like, uh, I mean, company like Google is uh, more concerned because that's their core segment. You have been using PC to access, you have using PC to, to search. And today the data uh, that we have in, in, in South Africa is such that 60% of the search in South Africa in the weekend coming from mobile devices. In the weekday it flip, it's a 60-40. But, but, but our time are moving into mobile. But the next, the next group, uh, what we call unwired, is actually the more interesting one. This is the mobile first 
mobile first community people that use a mobile phone as a primary device and and mind you um, these users used to be that we can differentiate this user by the type of phone they're using if they're using a feature phone they're this right if they're using smartphone they're knowledge workers but with this android phone and all these different version of berries and white white box phone uh, that's no longer the differentiator. These guys are also picking up uh, affordable uh, smartphone as well. And as one of the speaker point out, actually large opportunity actually lie outside the major urban centers in the tier two cities when the entertainment options are limited. That's where they, when a five rupees a day unlimited package becomes such an attractive entertainment option. <coughs> right. This is a market snapshot. I just want to show you some of the data that we collect. Uh, <coughs> In US, <clears throat> uh, for example, you see uh, just on the left that is the uh, that is the telco penetrations. Uh, you will see AT and T, mobile broadband, T-Mobile. But look at some of the bigger the yellow slice, Metro PCS. Uh, I, I bet a lot of you haven't heard about Metro PCS. <coughs> Metro PCS is a carrier that target the middle America, primarily Hispanic, <coughs> and uh, they have they have quite big. Uh, 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 penetration in Southern California and also in, uh, in Texas, in Florida. So these are the these are carrier that started with a forty dollars unlimited package, voice, SMS, and mobile web, <coughs> right? So and the the phone that they use a lot uh, was a, a, a certain old BlackBerry. Uh, you could see BlackBerry eight five three zero and a whole bunch of Blackberries was there and some a lot of Samsung there as well, right? <coughs> Okay, this is India. This is, I think, about two or three months old. I think you saw almost the same, same, same uh, slide from, from Naveen, and you will see, in fact, our numbers of air cell is even bigger. Uh, this, this, is a, this, is a, this is a carrier that was aggressively pushing very cheap packages, five rupees a day, I think 15 rupees for three days or something like that. So the number of mobile internet segment for us uh, is, is huge. By the way, you can have a real, uh, you can have a very latest data for this to come from Basili site. Uh, this is a site called planner.basili.com. Right, uh, we, we give you all the interactive data for this that you, you like to study on any market. And you also see that, for example, the top few phones that are being used in, in, in India are all Nokia. These are all Nokia phones, and uh, there's some Samsung. Of course, there's iPhone, it's nowhere to be found. <coughs> okay, and uh, uh, this is uh, this is an example of a market which is uh, neither too advanced nor, 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 nor a very, very emerging type, Malaysia. Uh, Look at the location. If some of you who understand the Malaysia a little bit, uh, you know that the KL, KL and Selangor, the, the, the yellow and the green are collectively called the Klang Valley, which is actually the most advanced area in Malaysia. Uh, most of the time, most all the marketers live there. I mean, I come from a northern part of Malaysia, a, a place called Perli, it's just next to, just, just at the border of, of, uh, of Thailand. But you see in the places like Pahang, Kelantan, Trengganu, these are East Coast Malaysia, Sarawak and Sabah, these are <coughs> East Malaysia on the Borneo Island, <laughs> where entertainment options are really, really limited. Yeah? So these are where you see the, the usages. Genders are quite well, uh, well, uh, well distributed, male 60% and female close to 40%. Uh, this is also an indicator of whether mobile internet pickup is, is well, well advanced in the country. In India, we still see something like 90% male and 10% female. And we always joke to each other that we are not very sure that the 10% female was real female. <laughs> because they, they, they were a guy that pretend to be female. Then they would go and befriend other female. And then they find out that the other female was also a male. <laughs> you did that? <laughs> okay, the other... The other chart you see on the left is, is the age. Um, that another misconception people have is that mobile internet is for the very young. You know, the 15 years old, the below 20 years old, it's not true. In fact, most of them, we see them at the first jobbers. They are the, they are people that have a uh, first job, all right? Uh, maybe some of them have been 20 to 35 years old, right? <clears throat> so that's, that's the thing. So what's the challenge when you try to market to this, to this uh, demographics? <clears throat> In the midst of all the noise, we have to educate the marketers. Because the marketers hear so much information about mobile marketing. The worst noise, sorry, I have to say this. The worst noise is that made by the mobile operators. <clears throat> right? Uh, they will make noise such as, you know, I know you, you are a frequent traveler to India like me. Right? <clears throat> and then you come to Mumbai uh, once in three months and you eat in this restaurant. So when you come here, I know how to send you the offers. For God's sake, please tell them to stop speaking these languages because it confuses everybody. 
Now, this is some very narrow ultra marketing of people, right? Uh, ultra little segment, right? So there are many, many noise uh, eventually, but as we go back to the marketers to educate them, uh, you have to tell basically a lot of experience that we learn on, 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 on digital marketing are very applicable to the mobile marketing, uh, mobile internet marketing as well. And the other one is that what to sell. Once you, once, one you, once you got to people on the mobile internet, do you aim for immediate transactions on, on, the, on, on the mobile internet? Uh, the, the data we heard, the data we, we see was that in India, for example, at any one time, if you take an Indian mobile internet users and you check his uh, prepaid credits, how much prepaid credits do you have? Apparently, 80% of the users have zero or negative credits. Right, let me say they have no credit left in the phone or negative. Because why, why do they have negative? Because they may have five rupees left and then they bought something which is 10 rupees. The carriers allow them to buy. So they have negative five. The next time you top out, they become five again. So, but if you are someone who tries to sell that user something immediately to hope to transaction, the guy has nothing to transact with you. <laughs> right, so that, that, is the, that, that is the challenge that uh, we, we face. But I want to show you some things that the marketers have been doing, not necessarily in the transactions and what, what can be successful. This, this is an example uh, that, uh, <clears throat> that Watercom, in, in, Watercom in South Africa was doing in, in during the World Cup uh, last year. So basically, uh, <clears throat> uh, an agency called Apuromac helped them to do something, uh, a site called Homeground Bombay, giving uh, all these updates about World Cup. And then, of course, the, the bank branding are clearly... Uh, placed in various places. Uh, you see a uh, top TV. It's actually a cable TV in South Africa. Um, <clears> Old <throat> Mutual. Old Mutual is actually a bank uh, that provides financial services and Nokia was doing something to promote their free music services. Of course, you have a whole bunch of mobile vests uh, that, that were selling mobile entertainment services. Uh, Adidas was doing something interesting in, in, in India. They were working with an agency called Isobar. They provide a free application for the World Cup application that they distribute on our free uh, mobile uh, game site called Juice. Uh, and and <clears throat> that's free. And then they, they get the user to use that uh, application and basically uh, uh, advance their brand, uh, brand message. Uh, Blackberry in India, was uh, they were using... Uh, our network to target the Windows and Symbian users. They want the Windows Symbian users to, to switch to BlackBerry. And uh, there is a, a cigarette brand in, in, in Indonesia called Jaru, which is a very famous, uh, very big cigarette brand, um, through an agency called Bubu Chika that uh, did another application to, to for the, the Indonesian badminton uh, open um, in, in that country. <clears throat> So they will measure things like download, usage, engagement, and recall. <coughs> I want to show you one, one interesting example uh, that, uh, that we saw in, 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 in Bangkok, uh, in, in Thailand. There's this hospital called Samitivit Hospital. It's a hospital that targets the upper middle, the middle class, a little bit less than the, the top tier in Bangkok, and also a lot of Middle Eastern tourists right? uh, in, 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 in <coughs> things. They first started many things, but they found that one of the most uh, interesting things they, they, they did and was most successful is what they call doctor on mobile. And the, 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 the marketer, marketing manager told me that uh, they are something called magnet doctor in, 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 in Thailand. I think it means that's a very attractive doctor. Everybody wants to see, them, see him. And because they have various, uh, various uh, <coughs> hospitals that he moves around, so they provide a mobile site whereby a user can go and check on where, where is his... Where's he? Uh, where's his appointment time? And when then can click a button and make a phone call to the hospital to, to book with the block doctor. So it was very successful and people liked that. And they they wanted to do one step further. They said uh, maybe when after they know which hospital they want to go to, we will work with the traffic information guy to tell them whether there is a, a traffic jam. Uh, what's the traffic condition? They tried for a while and they gave up because in Bangkok it's jam all the time. <coughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> But a couple of things that uh, they did, which was very interesting, I found. Uh, this is a bit advanced. Uh, uh, they call it the expect Mummy Alert. Uh, uh, it's an iPhone application. I believe they're beginning to move to other platforms. <laughs> so if you're expecting mother, you go, to the, you go to the hospital, you get this application, you enter the expecting date. Right? Then the, the application will know what to show you. It means three months pregnant, what do you expect? Four months pregnant, what do you expect? So very information-oriented. If they go one step further, uh, your ultrasound picture, you can actually upload it to the picture. It becomes it become a, it become a, uh, a journal 
of your pregnancy. Then they go one step further after the baby is born, they say there's a vaccine alert. So the baby is born and three months you're supposed to do that, four months you're supposed to do that. This is what you, you look out for at the stage of baby development. And of course, you can upload the baby picture. <laughs> right? So that's how they use that to, 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 uh, to, uh, to engage the, 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 uh, their users. And this, a lot of these uh, this innovations are coming out from the emerging markets. Right? You know, it's coming out from, <laughs> from a West, normal Western market, the emerging market, because this is a place where users are in, in the front of using the mobile and in, in their daily life. Okay? <clears throat> so, in fact, the question I want usually marketers to ask is that can mobile transform your business? And the challenge, you think you should not think about mobile as a new channel or gimmick to reach your existing customers. You can, right? Uh, I have this set of people that may come to my shop. Let me spam them with all the SMS so that they will come or this mobile internet. But think about how mobile can help you to reach new customer or service on your existing customers or your existing customer batches. Some of the mobile, some of the bank has done very good mobile banking services, right? In, 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 South Africa, they were leader in mobile banking services worldwide simply because there are so many people that have no access to a physical bank building or an ATM. So with the, with the mobile banking services, they are able to reach this new customer or even service their customer better. Right. Uh, another story we tell about mobile banking was that we did, uh, we did a case study with a bank called OCBC Bank in Singapore before that did a mobile banking application uh, service as well. And to their surprise, they find that uh, the, the one of the place that one of the time that people use mobile banking a lot was after a mahjong game. Uh, you know what's a mahjong game? The Chinese four people sitting together and playing a game. Isn't it counterintuitive for you that <coughs> that if four people are facing each other and playing a game, and if you need to pay each other, why don't you pull out the cash? Why do you have to then take out a phone to, <laughs> to, to pay each other? We actually don't know why. Perhaps they, they, didn't, they want to hide the money trail. If the police bash in, nobody, they're just having a game of fun. But maybe they're betting too much. But these are consumer behavior <laughs> that, that, that people are, the marketers are discovering. Right? When we did a campaign with, with uh, AirAsia, the first thing they wanted to do was they bid the mobile booking site. And they were buying traffic from us to drive traffic. And they hoped that people would buy air tickets on mobile. But people don't. <laughs> people may want to use mobile for something else. So I think the marketers, uh, in their challenge, is not about the mobile internet as a medium to market your service, but mobile internet as a medium to service your customer or to acquire a new customer. Because it opened up a new way for you to reach them. <clears throat> okay, uh, very fast, the last few slides, just introduce ourselves. We call ourselves a mobile media company. We're offering brand owners agency access to global advertising network on the mobile internet. And uh, we, our network is made up of publishers from across the world and our own mobile media properties as well. Very quickly, this is what we do. Uh, we have advertisers, many of them, and they, they come to place uh, mobile uh, ads into a network. Uh, tip, and then this ads go to publishers. Typical, uh, typical business model is that we keep 35% of the per click price and then we pay 65% to the publishers. <clears throat> That's the basic ad network, which is uh, AdMob has that, and uh, some other network has that as well. But what, what differentiates us is that we have a couple of media properties that we built that uh, allow us to have a unique audience that we can serve our advertisers better. Now, on the left is MyGamma. We were actually pleased to know that MyGamma was number three. During the recent research in India, number three most popular mobile social networking service in India. Right? <coughs> I can send you a link if you don't believe. Uh, the first, of us is Facebook, and followed by Orchid. And uh, we beat actually Twitter <laughs> in that survey. <coughs> Right, uh, the second one is Juice, uh, DJ is a free mobile game site, and uh, we have a free music listing site and also a, a free, uh, free recipe site as well. So um, <clears throat> these, these properties allow us to have a unique audience, and we are able to provide more entertainment, uh, advertising options, uh, sponsorships and things like that to our advertisers and deep consumer insights. Okay, um, <clears throat> I think this, you know this already probably, but uh, just, just quickly to put everybody in the same place. What is mobile display advertising? I mean, you, you replace text or graphical banners on mobile internet sites, <clears throat> right? Uh, <clears throat> and, and, and advertisers either pay per clicks or pay per impression, but mostly uh, pay per clicks right now. And the advertising is what we call pull. So we don't send our SMS broadcasts or spam. Okay, <clears throat> and uh, mobile advertising network, what they do is aggregate many mobile internet sites 
categorize the sites into different channels, uh, premium, community, entertainment. We do have an adult channel that doesn't mix with the rest. <coughs> and then we provide an easy way for advertisers to target either countries, carriers, phone types, and capabilities, and things like that. <coughs> okay. And the final slide, the conclusion of mobile uh, marketing, mobile internet marketing. Uh, this, this one, I think, what, what I like to take home is that with, with the lowering cost of uh, ownership, both the handset and data set, data, data rate, a uh, large number of users are surfing on the mobile internet. So as I mentioned, our, our, our large, largest market today, the top three, was South Africa, Indonesia, and India. In three years, I expect India to overtake these two to become number one. In fact, today, India already surfing in terms of volume, we already serve the most mobile internet advertising in this country versus anywhere else in the world. Except that because ours is an auction network, right? <laughs> and advertisers is beating price, it was low, so our revenue, in terms of revenue is concerned, India is number three, right? But we saw growth starting coming up from various places, such as Middle East. <clears throat> and <clears throat> and one, of the, one of the joy that I have running this business is when the map start popping up with large mobile internet usage with a country that I didn't know exists or because of my limited and very bad geographical knowledge or history knowledge I didn't, didn't know exists because I didn't know a place called Lithuania before. Now I knew. <laughs> and in terms of uh, Northern Africa, there was one country that was, there was Northern Africa and, 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 and Middle East. I, I just want to give a good, big quick quiz. There was one country which is actually ranked number one in the growth of mobile internet usage. Just take a guess. Sorry? No, no, I mean uh, Northern Africa and um, mid, uh, Middle East. Kenya is below the Sub Saharan. Uh, Nigeria? Is what? Nigeria is actually below Sub Saharan. You, you've got bad geography, worse than me. <laughs> Sorry? Egypt, Libya? Yeah, I was surprised. You know, when I talk to people, people in terms of Middle East, they will say uh, UAE, Saudi Arabia. It's a country called Libya. And every time it happens, it's actually a leading indicator. I just go to check the mobile internet rate in that country. It typically means that some price will have just broken out <laughs> between all the carriers, uh, and then the price go down. In Southeast Asia, uh, after Malaysia and Thailand, the next one, the next big light flashing is Vietnam. <laughs> right? And then uh, we'll see Philippines. So Philippines have 100 million people. Unfortunately, the vast uh, are not, are not uh, that's another topic. I'll talk about it later if we have time. <laughs> A lot of these activities are going off portal, which is interesting. Uh, a lot of some of the mobile advertising activity I have with a mobile carrier here in India was for them to buy off portal traffic to drive traffic back to on portal. That's quite surprising. You know, they have something, something to sell on, on portal, they buy off portal traffic to drive them back to the, to the on portal. <clears throat> third point important besides the major, major urban centers, opportunity will lie in the second or third tier cities. And for publishers as well, if there are publishers here, you can move your content to mobile internet to capture the eyebrows and add, add dollars for this. So that's my last slide. Uh, you can, oops, sorry, you can exploit this uh, opportunity to reach this new audience, which we call the unwired. I think the unwired is the more interesting segment, right? Uh, whereas the other wired segment, you have many, many, many people competing for the ad dollar. It's like going to China, people say that there's so many middle class, but you walk into a Shanghai supermarket in the same detergent brand, there are like 30 brands fighting for your attention. <laughs> right, so uh, although there they, they are lots of middle class to buy that brand, to buy that product, but there's so many competition. But in unwired space, those in the second and third tier cities, there's no competition, or very little competition yet. So that's my last slide. Thank you very much. Yeah.